Hi, uh, this video is meant to be an introduction to MongoDB. Now, MongoDB is part of a new breed of um, what, are, what a lot of people are calling NoSQL databases. Now, I think probably one of the things that is, is the biggest driver behind MongoDB and uh, this type of database, uh, and there are others, CouchDB being another one that, that's fairly popular, is that they are their, their primary aim is to scale well and to be fast. So, so they aim to outperform MySQL and Oracle and different types of relational databases. Now there, there's a few ways that they do that and there is a cost when it comes to implementing that in software. What I'm going to do in this short video is simply show you how to install MongoDB and run a couple of commands. Now with that in mind, if you just want to play around with it, you can actually try it out on their website. Um, they, they'll put you right into a Mongo shell and you can start executing commands against the Mongo database in a browser. Um, but let's, let's go through the steps and install it on Linux. Installing MongoDB for first use is really easy. You could simply go to the downloads page, choose the download you're interested in. Once that's downloaded, I'll go into my downloads folder here. And you'll see I've got it right there. Now, what I want to do is unzip this. And while this is unzipping, the only thing you need, in addition to the binary files that are part of their standard Unix Linux release, is a data directory where the database files themselves will run. So let's create a data directory. Okay, so now we've got a data directory. And now it's as simple as starting up the MongoDB server. To do that, you simply run MongoD, and you have to give it the DB path. Okay, so once you've started this, there are a few things that have happened. First of all, it's started up. It's also listening on a web port. I'll show you how that works in a minute. So open up another shell. And now we can connect into Mongo by running the Mongo executable. Notice this isn't MongoD. And there are other parameters that we can pass in, like you know which host we wanted to connect to. But in the absence of those, it assumes local host. So now we're connected to the database. And notice that it automatically connects us into what it calls a test database. So if we wanted to say db.mycollection.save and then give that a document name Daniel interests MongoDB. Okay, so we just give it a simple JSON document and that's it. Now, if we say db.mycollection.find, it pulls back this new record. And a couple of things you'll notice is that, one, it has a, an ID built in here. There's a lot of meaning contained in this ID. And in fact, different sections of this, what looks like an MD5 hash, contain a timestamp. They contain machine-specific details about the, the Ethernet card and, and other details that allow the clustering mechanism or the, the scalable deployment to uh, reconcile between different hosts. And then, of course, it's got the names uh, or the, the values that I put into that document. So that's it. You've got the database running now. You can see also in the log the details that came through for the transactions that you've done in here. Now let me show you one other thing. By default, MongoDB starts up an administrative console that's available over the web. And it's on port 2817 by default. And what this shows you is at a snapshot what the status of your Mongo database is. So it shows you uh, the clients that are connected, it shows you details about 
the database, the records, the, uh, the transactions, and so on. So this, this is extremely useful, and in another tutorial I'll show you how to use REST-based commands that are built right into the Mongo server engine. So that's it. For now, you've got Mongo installed, you've been able to add a document, and in other tutorials we'll go through some of the other details. Thanks.